Hey guys, Hoppy Cans here bringing you another five top tips for Company of Heroes 2. Number one, using shift commands. So, what do I mean by using shift commands? Basically, it is the action of holding down the shift key on your keyboard and then issuing multiple commands to your units. And then once one command is completed, they will automatically do the second command that you've issued them. And that saves you a lot of time, as I'll now, in I'll now show you. So, here we have a rare shun squad, and here we have another rare shun squad. I'm going to get both these squads to capture this point, th th each point next to them. But one squad's going to be on shift commands, and the other one is not. So what I'll do here is I'll get you to capture this point, and this one I'm going to click on, capture this point, and then I'm going to hold down the shift command, and then I'm going to get it to then move to this point and capture this point, and then still holding down the shift key, and then I'm going to tell it to capture this munitions point, and then this VP. Okay? So what you'll see happen is that this squad will not... You know, we've not told it to do anything, so it just sits idle. Well, this one, as soon as it's finished, finished capturing this point, it moves on to do another another task. And as you can see, you know, a lot of people, newer players, will you know forget about units and leave them idle. So this is a great way to keep your squads constantly doing stuff by issuing shift commands and, and continuously capping. So guys, you can also use shift commands to build defenses and lay mines, as I'll now indicate. Also, while capping. So what we'll do is we'll come over to this point. We'll lay down a tank trap, also hold down the shift key, then press Q to bring up the barbed wire, and then lay a strip of barbed wire, and then I'll take the hand, my hands off the keyboard, and you'll see that once they finish the tank trap, they'll then go over and complete that piece of barbed wire. We also then can tell them to, I don't know, maybe wire off this little bit of green cover here, that I, you know, and then come over here, and then wire this, wire that, all while holding down the shift key, and this is, you know, a great thing to do, as while they're capping this point, they can deny enemy cover, an incredibly important shift command that you guys should be aware of is when you're laying mines. Because if you just lay a mine and then forget to shift command away from um, that position after you've laid a mine, what you'll see that your squad is going to be s standing right on top of that mine. And that's you know, and, and the formation they're in is obvious that they've just laid a mine to anyone who's wise and played this game enough because that's a general formation that you'll see them in. Uh, and um, they'll then just try and drop some artillery on top of this location, maybe blowing your squad up in the process, or just blowing the mine up and you've just wasted the munitions. So, what you should do when laying a mine is lay the mine and then hold down the shift command and then just right click away once you've completed the mine while holding down the shift. So they'll, they'll complete the mine. That's what I'll see. And then as soon as they're done, they'll now move away from that mine and then that allows that mine to, to hopefully remain hidden from the enemy. Okay, if you if you just lay the mine and forget to shift away from it, it's obvious the mine is there. So next, guys, I want to talk about using the shift command when retreating. So if we if we right. take this MG with this restaurant, we'll take three men off of the squad, and there'll be one guy left, and that one guy is very susceptible to being wiped. You know, a enemy sniper might pick him off, or um, you know, just a quick burst down from any LMG might be able to take him out. So what you want to do, guys, is whenever you're capturing a weapon like this, is you want to use the shift command along with retreating. So you want you want to issue a cap command. Okay, so you want to right click the um, the MG to capture it. And then you want to hold down shift and then click the retreat button. So shift and then click the retreat button on the right. And that way, as soon as you capture that, the original squad of the restaurant is going to immediately retreat all the way back to base. Okay? And that way, you uh, reduce the risk of the ch chance of this squad going down in combat. So now I've just power dropped in another MG and I'm just going to show you um, what not to do. So if you were just to capture the MG with just a normal command without shift ret retreating, you'll capture it and then that one guy will stay around and then you have to manually retreat him like that. But you can see there, that guy stays around for a little bit longer um, than if I, if you know, as pre you know, when we previously just issued the shift command. So always, when capping um, stolen weapons or drop weapons like the support teams like that, make sure to always use shift retreat command when capping so that original squad can get back home to base and then you can reinforce it to full strength and you can get it back into the fight. Tip number two, building facing. So, with support weapons, when you get inside a building... Your weapons, your support weapon will automatically face a certain direction. But if you want to face it towards a direction where you want it, the MG to point to, what you need to do is just click the A button on your keyboard and then left click the area where you want the MG to face to. So if we want to face it to this side of the battlefield, we would click on this side and the MG would turn that way. If we wanted to face it to the north side of the map, we would then again A click and then let, click on the A button and then left click where we want it to go. However, bear in mind, there is a short setup time before the MG will be ready to fire out of that window, as you'll see. And so when the MG actually appears, that is when it can start shooting, okay? So again, look here, the MG hasn't appeared yet. 
and now there it appears on the bottom there. So there's a, there's a couple of seconds there uh, of delay b before issuing a face command and the MGB actually being able to fire outside of that specific window on that side that you wanted it to face out of, okay? Same thing applies to Rakettenwerfers. As you can see here, Rakettenwerfer inside the building. And again, A click, get it to turn around and face, shoot out a certain window, okay? One thing I want to mention though, when, when you issue the face command, is that the MG will no longer turn and automatically face out other windows if enemies approach from them. If I've got my MG set to face this direction, if a squad flanks this area, I have to manually then tell the MG to turn and shoot that way. Now I can then issue a cancel direct f uh, face team weapon, which, on, uh, which is S, and that will then mean that the MG will automatically then now, when enemy shot, will just turn and deal with that incoming threat. Now the reason why you want to automatically put on a direct face of your um, MG is, for instance, when, when we um, jumped into the building originally, our MG was facing this way, right? And the enemy, you know, we want the MG already to be looking a certain way. Because you know that we just went through that there's that couple second delay, and a couple second delay could be the, be the difference between your MG getting the suppression off on a squad, or that squad being able to get there in time and lobbing in the grenade in, or, or flame squad getting in and killing your MG, okay? So it's very important to always uh, have your MGs facing the right direction for, uh, you know, to, to really to immediately shoot an incoming enemy threat. So I'll now just demonstrate this. So here we've told our MG to automatically face from this direction, and now these conscripts are pushing in. You'll see the MG is not automatically going to turn and deal with these incoming conscripts, okay? I have to press A and then left click the MG to then fight this on this side, okay? And now the MG will then open up and shoot these guys. So we're going to do that engagement again, but this time I'm going to turn off cancel um, direct face weapon team. So that means now when the enemy conscripts come into a uh, vision of the MG in the house, it'll automatically turn without me issuing a face command. So we'll then cancel that. And then I'll get these concepts to come in and attack. Selection, owner, enemy. And you'll see that the MG, without me issuing any command, will should now turn. There you go. See your hands off the keyboard. And it's turning now to deal with the incoming threat. Number three, exiting buildings. So guys, nearly every building has two exits. There's some that don't, but most do. This is one of those buildings. Now, if we want to exit the building, you could just press this, you click the, the, you click the building, and then you click the, this button here, and your MG will unpack. However, your MG will always unpack in a certain direction, but maybe you don't want it to unpack on that side, because the enemy are attacking from this side, and that's the danger side, right? If you jump out this side of the building, this could be the safe side, where you know the building is providing a line of sight blocker between you and the enemy, and that allows you, you to retreat away safely back to your base. So let's do that again. If we want to make sure to um, exit out the side of a building that we want to uh, exit out of, what you want to do is you want to press tab, and then you want to right click the side of the building that you would like to exit to. So if I was to click this side of the building, my MG will now come out of this door here, as you'll see, rather than the door over here. I'll now show you guys on other buildings over here. So let's go into the church. And again, if I was to just to tell the MG to exit with just clicking this button, the MG will exit a default side, that maybe is the side that you don't want to if it exit, but we could also exit from this side of the church here as well. So we could press tab, and then right mouse click to then exit this side of the building if we wanted to. So there you go, you can jump the MG in the building, and then we right click this side of the building, and there you go, there goes the MG out of that side. So that way you can exit the building at your side that you would like to get out of, and not the default setting. So here I'll show you um, this in action. So here we'll have an enemy shock squad attacking you from this side. The house, I say they managed to get close to you. So if we were to just click the exit building like this, we would exit the danger side, we come out this side, and if we try and retreat, we would take more damage as we try and escape, okay? So we'll do that engagement again, let's say the enemy got close to our MG, and again, we want, for this time, we, we shift right clicked out the side of the building, and retreated. This time, we take no casualties. Tip number four, attack ground. So, what is attack ground? Attack ground is a function on most of your support weapons and your vehicles can do in Company Heroes 2. So let's click on uh, the T-70 for instance. Now attack ground generally is the E button on most of these weapons here, as you can see, E. Now if you press E with the, on the hotkeys and you left click, and that allows these vehicles to automatically fire in a certain area where they want them to. So there we go, so pressing E and all of these things are gonna fire without even seeing any enemies. Now, it's very handy to do this if you have not got line of sight or if you want to shoot through a hedgerow. Or if you want to maybe even uh, hit even further than you can actually normally can with the Zizgun. 
So if I use attack ground here on the max range of my Ziz gun, sometimes the shot, as you can see here, there's the max range of the Ziz gun, right? Okay. But it's actually, the shot sometimes can land a little bit further than that. So, it's always worth it, chat. If an enemy vehicle is, you know, somehow manages to get away from you. So let's just put down, for instance, a enemy Stuka. So out of range. So out, this is out of the range. I'll just turn it to the side here. So we're pretty much out of range of this. Okay, I'll also turn off the fog of war here. So we can't see. Let, so we let's just say the Stuka has just fired from this location, but we're not within range. But if we were you to use attack ground, eventually we would get that Stuka. But sometimes, even with our first shot, we might be lucky. And look, there we go. Boom. We just take it on our second shot using attack ground there. And we were able to take out the Stuka um, even further than our max range. If we weren't, if didn't use attack ground, this, this gun wouldn't even bother to fire. One, because it can't see the enemy unit because it's through the fog of war. And um, two, because it's not of its, you know, it's not in its actual uh, range. But there you go. It's a great example of using attack ground. Let's use attack ground through a hedgerow now. So here we have two enemy units. And we have a T-34. Let's say we have somehow got vision of this area. The, you know, we have got a unit fighting over here. Let's say some conscripts pushed up. And we spotted the enemy army here. But here we have a T-34. And we'll be reduced to use attack ground through the hedgerow to get this panzer worker. Like so. The enemy won't be able to see us until we've actually fired the shot and connected. And we can also attack ground onto the MG here. And potentially kill the MG through this hedgerow. However, attack ground against infantry through hedgerows is not as successful against vehicles. There you go. We are eventually getting hits in there onto the enemy unit. So, there you go. That's how effective using attack ground is. Make sure you use it in the game. Number five, building and denying cover. So, in our previous video, we talked about uh, always using the best available cover. But, I also want to now go on and talk about why you should always be building cover whenever you've got the opportunity to do so. Especially when you want to lock down areas. So, here we're going to... Come over here and try and retake this fuel point. Let's say the enemy had this fuel, but we managed to push them off it. So first things first is what we want to do is we would want to build our own cover. We would want to get our engineers up there. We would want to wire off our opponent's cover, so deny their cover. We'd also want to wire off our cover as well on the on the on the side that our opponent can benefit from. And then we'd also want to maybe come over here with the concept and build cover on this VP like so, like that. So in a matter of what 30 seconds or so, we have pretty much very well fortified this area now uh, for our infantry and making it a lot harder for the enemy to push back and take it. We don't need to wire off this side of the green cover that the enemy has built because we could use that ourselves potentially and it would never benefit them unless we somehow um, attack from the rear, uh, from the side there. Same thing, we come over here with the conscripts and we want to wire off uh, this bit of cover here. And again, that way we deny all the cover for the enemy we solidify control of our position, and um, you know we want to lock this area down. So since this is like this map is Rebel Express, and this is a very highly contested area, which is the fuel point and the VP. You really want to try and lock this area down as much as you can do. So you want to be wiring off any types of cover that the opponent can use. So you need these haystacks here, um, maybe this wall, ship wall down here. You want to be putting mines over here, here, over here, here, maybe on this flank around here as well. And that way, nice and fortified. Yeah, you could even like do layered sandbags, guys, and maybe come back a bit and build another sandbag here for maybe a uh, a, a machine gun. But again, remember to always put down the mine, uh, the the barbed wire. If you haven't got time, maybe to lay some some um, some barbed wire, or if you've got lots of munitions spare, instead of laying down um, barbed wire, instead you could put down a mine. The enemy might rush up and think, "Oh, look, I can go grab that um, that piece of cover there." Uh, thinking it's safe, but then you've, you've cheekily laid a mine there, so they run up thinking they're going to get cover, and then they run smack bang into a mine, and um, you know that allows you to win that engagement. So there you go. So again, if you've got time on your hands and the, the, you're not, you can't really push your opponent. You might as well just keep fortifying like this, you know. Keep fortifying, build lead defense. But what one thing you don't want to do, guys, is do too much in one area in the sense of like putting too many infantry squads and too like having multiple Ziz guns, multiple Maxims and stuff all here because that becomes an artillery magnet. Make sure you've got enough units there but not too clumped up and too close together. Otherwise you're going to be, you know, sorry when lots of artillery comes down upon your face. So there you go. 
So guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that somewhat enjoyable and maybe you learned something. Uh, if you want to see more content from me, click on the link over here and over here. If you'd like to subscribe, click on the button here. Make sure to click on the notification bell down there if you want to be notified whenever I post new YouTube content. And you can catch me nearly every single day apart from Mondays on twitch.tv slash helpinghands. And I'll catch you next one, guys. Take care.